Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host, and I'm excited to be here. We are just getting closer and closer each week to year end. We're about a month away now. Uh, we're into December, and this is uh, this is an important time for many nonprofits. I know it is for mine, and as we are moving into year end, we're getting closer and closer, uh, starting to see some results from our November letters, e-blasts, email marketing. I hope you're seeing some good results. I hope that you have incorporated a lot of the strategies and methods. If you're new to this channel and you're just now hearing about our year-end uh, efforts and our year-end strategies, be sure to check out the playlist that I'll be listing up above and you'll hear our strategies. We are about eight videos in right now. It's hard to believe that we started in October, but I believe that the best organizations that see the most success do so because they get an early start at year-end. So I hope that you are one of of those early adapters that you were one of those that got an early start but if you didn't this will be the week for sure it's never um, too early to start but the key is getting started and a lot of you may have been busy leading up to this point but this last month is so important so I'd really encourage you especially incorporating the letter phone strategy writing a good letter email getting it out those to those people as soon as possible and be sure to pick up the phone and call these people as quickly as you possibly can and get the responses. Remember, as I've mentioned in some of our videos in the past, that we see as much as a 28% increase from a letter alone by adding a phone to that. And of course, nothing beats meeting face-to-face -face with individuals. So that is one of the major things that I would recommend for you to do is to meet face to face with people and so that's really important so well let's dive right into this um our first question today in the jim and java broadcast the question today is from don in charlottesville virginia and don asks is it better to push for restricted funds those are designated or unrestricted funds undesignated and why Wow, Don, I'll tell you, that is such a great question, and it's kind of an age-old question in that um, both undesignated and designated or restricted and unrestricted funds are both important and are both very necessary. So I'll try and unpack first a little bit about those and then kind of tell you why I do a little bit of both. Now, from the standpoint of the unrestricted or undesignated funds, these are the funds that do not have any certain designation to them. They are the funds that could be the where most needed funds. They are the funds that allow you the most flexibility. These are the funds that our finance department, our finance professionals, those individuals in accounting love the unrestricted the undesignated funds because those can go to anything they can go to copiers they can go to rent they can go to lights they can go to purchasing equipment they can go to purchasing new carpeting all those things are very very good and those are necessary funds to have the downside on those is that very few people really want to give unrestricted undesignated funds we get gifts that way but they tend to be smaller gifts they tend to be gifts from individuals who are are they know us they love our organization they trust how we use the money and as a result they just give us carte blanche to say wherever the funds are needed i trust you now what we have found over the years is that people tend to give much larger gifts when they are restricted or designated gifts when you ask specifically for a project or program and something within that effort we are trying to fund x number of meals to feed homeless people in our rescue mission at the at christmas time or we're trying to provide a fresh water filter for 10 villages in africa or we're trying to open up new campuses in our efforts uh, for um, bringing the gospel message to students in college those are the kinds of designated gifts that people would give because generally what you can do is you can boil that down to x dollars will have x impact 
and people can give specifically to that. We're trying to get five people to give $5,000 a piece to buy a water filter that costs $25,000. That may be the kind of thing that you're talking about. So we get larger gifts that way. But it's also very restricted funds and it doesn't allow you to use that for anything else. And so what can happen sometimes is if the money comes in before you're prepared for a program or an effort, that money actually may sit in, an, uh, in a restricted fund for two months, three months, six months, even a year sometimes before it's used which makes it very difficult, especially if you're a smaller nonprofit, you're barely being able to pay your staff or maybe aren't able to pay your staff, but yet you've got a good amount of money sitting in a restricted fund. Those are very, very difficult things to have to deal with. So restricted funds tend to be very nice that way. Just know that they're smaller. Now, what I, the reason I like, as an example, I like events and I will position events from an undesignated or unrestricted standpoint, I, I have been able to work out over the years at, at events that I do a unrestricted funding effort with certain restrictions, if that makes sense. So I will position and market certain things at our events so that they have the feel of being restricted, but they're undesignated or unrestricted. And so I will use the wording your money, your gift of $600 or $50 a month will enable us to purchase five meals for, our, for homeless people in our rescue mission or things like this. So saying that your money would help purchase things like these five meals allows you to have the freedom to be able to Give people an example of the kinds of things that could be purchased with your money but doesn't put you in the box and doesn't restrict your ask at that event to only purchasing meals for our, our homeless population. So I hope that makes sense, but giving people examples so that in their mind they're picturing these meals, but it's positioned as things like this. And that has made a real difference. So in understanding this issue, you've got restricted money generally brings in larger gifts than unrestricted money. Unrestricted gives you greater freedom to use those funds, but you will get smaller gifts. So my recommendation is find the best of both worlds. Now, you may have some individuals that always want to give to restricted and don't talk them out of that if that's what people want to do then you need to encourage them to do that but you also want to present opportunities on your response devices for your mailings you want a where most needed opportunity so let's just say that i am a rescue mission and that i have got i just in within the context the body of the letter i'm positioning purchasing meals at thanksgiving so the idea is that your gift will purchase X number of meals. That will be restricted designated money. But on that same mailing, on the response device in that mailing, you have, please use my money where the need is greatest. And you'll have a percentage, about 10% generally, of your responses will check the box where the gift is needed so that you also get the best of both worlds in that area. So Don, I hope that answered your question. I really encourage all of you to submit questions. You can always do so down below. Let me know in the comments section whether you use restricted or unrestricted for your appeals. And just know that we've got a series of videos out at year end that helps you answer these questions. And I hope you're taking advantage of that. If you aren't a subscriber, we would love to have you as a subscriber. And make sure that you reach out with questions on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java on Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies. And of course, email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as I always say, we strive to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. So thanks a lot. And we'll see you next week with our next episode of Jim and Java. <music>